In this video, we are going to a Kyrgyzstan town Karakol. We will stay with the Kyrgyz family, go to hot springs, enjoy beautiful landscapes and visit some interesting locations in the area. But before we start, a little prehistory about the difficulties with couchsurfing and hitchhiking in Kyrgyzstan and how we turned out to be in Karakol that we were planning to go to another place. If you are not interested in these topics, you can directly jump to the part of the video where we are exploring the beauty of Karakol. So, we were coming from a mountain Kyrgyz lake Songkul that we visited with my couchsurfing friends and where we stayed in traditional Kyrgyz yurts. After that, two of our friends decided to continue their way and visit some other lake high in the mountains for which they had to get a special permission from the government and me with my Egyptian friend Omar didn't want to come back to the capital right away as we were quite far from Bishkek and not far from Isakur lake so we decided to spend a couple of days there we wanted to swim in the lake as I'm not working at the moment and the savings that I have are not huge I try to travel on a very low budget because the less money I spend the more time I can afford to travel and focus on making videos for my YouTube channel as it takes me quite a lot of time and if I have a regular job, I will not have enough time to really work on the content for YouTube. So usually when I travel, I go to places where I can find couchsurfing hosts, because then I don't need to pay for accommodation. And in Kyrgyzstan, it was quite hard as couchsurfing is not really popular there. There are a lot of users, but the majority of them are not active. Even in the capital Bishkek, it was quite hard for me to find hosts, and both of them were foreigners. Local people are not active at all. I tried to find hosts on Isakur Lake before, but there were almost no active users there. I wrote to four people and all of them just ignored me. So this time we decided to go to Cholponata, a little resort on Isakur Lake, and stay there for a day or two, renting a room in some house. We were told that it was possible to find something for around $8 per night per person. In Cholponata there are some nice beaches for swimming. So on that day we first came in a shared taxi from Songkur Lake to Kochkor and then from Kochkor to the edge of Isakur Lake to the town Balakchi. There we needed to change transportation, take a minibus or another shared taxi to go to Cholponata, as there was no direct ride there from where we were coming. They do not have a good system of public transportation between cities in Kyrgyzstan. When we arrived in Balakchi, we had to wait because the shared taxis or minibuses only go when they are full of passengers. We came there at around 4 pm, waited for half an hour, but no other people came and I heard the stories that sometimes you have to wait for hours until the car gets full, which is crazy. So we decided to hitchhike. But there is a difficulty with hitchhiking in Kyrgyzstan also, as in Central Asia in general. I already had some difficulty with hitchhiking when it didn't work out. When we were coming from Almaty in Kazakhstan to Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan with my friend Nadezh, first we decided to hitchhike. We were very optimistic, we came to the edge of Almaty and used the thumbs up. The first car stopped, turned out it was a taxi. Then another car stopped and the driver wouldn't give us a ride without money. Turned out that hitchhiking in this part of the world is not common at all. On the other hand, it's common for people to stop cars on the way, agree on some amount of money with them and then go together. So we tried to hitchhike for around one hour. And this time about 20 cars stopped, half of them were taxi drivers and the other half wouldn't take us for free. All of them wanted money. So in the end, we gave up this idea, we got acquainted with two more ladies and then we took a shared taxi to the border with Kyrgyzstan. And from there we took another shared taxi to Bishkek. I learned later that the situation with hitchhiking is almost the same both in Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. As there are not enough means of public transportation, especially on the roads between cities, and as the majority of population is not rich, it is common for people to stop cars on the way and pay for their ride. The drivers this way earn some money to compensate their expenses for the gasoline for this trip. So everyone expects money here if they stop for you on the road. 
Though we did hitchhike successfully when we were coming back from a national park Ala Archa located not far from Bishkek. At that time, a young couple picked up me with my friends, and they told us that actually normally they never pick up people on the road. But as they saw clearly that we were foreigners, they decided to help. So still some travelers managed to hitchhike in this region, but then usually you really have to spend a lot of time waiting for the car that will give you a ride for free. So we decided to stop a car and offer the driver the amount of money that we would spend on public transportation. We were lucky, the very first car stopped and agreed to take us to Cholponata. And then something interesting happened. Our driver, his name is Nurlan, turned out to be a very communicative and talkative guy. And he was going to Caracol, he was living there. After communicating for a while, he told us, hey, why don't you come to Caracol with me? Don't go to Cholponata, what will you do there? And at that time, I checked the weather forecast, it was going to be rainy and cold the next day, not suitable for swimming. So he invited us to come and stay at his home with his family and promised to show us around. Not thinking too much, we agreed. So this is how we ended up in Caracol that was two hours away from Cholponata. I like being spontaneous, I'm always flexible and ready to change my travel plan if there is a better option. We arrived at Caracol in the evening and first we went to a small local cafe to have dinner. We got lagman which is homemade noodles with meat and vegetables and some cabbage salad. Then we came to Nurlan's home and his older sister prepared places to sleep for us on the floor of one room and we had tea together. We had tea with milk, just like we usually drink it in my home country, Kazakhstan. Nurlan was living in this big old private house together with his wife, two kids, his sister and mother-in-law. It was very nice to stay in the house of a local Kyrgyz family. They were very hospitable and had a very nice atmosphere in the house. So the next day Nurlan took us on a tour in and around Karakol. It was very nice that we didn't have to plan anything. He was local, he knew all the places and he said that he would bring us everywhere with his car. We just agreed that we will get him gas for the car and that's it. He wasn't working at that moment and the gas in Kyrgyzstan is not really cheap. So Karakol is a town of Kyrgyzstan with population of around 80,000 people. As Kyrgyzstan used to be a part of former Soviet Union, you can see here Soviet architecture, houses that look like boxes and also there are some old historical houses. It is a small and quiet town but it has become quite popular in the last years among travelers, hikers, backpackers and nature lovers. These people are attracted by amazing mountains and beautiful nature around the town. There are numerous hiking trails, places for camping, mountain lakes, amazing viewpoints and a ski resort here. And what especially attracts many people is that the landscapes around Caracol are mostly quite wild and untouched by people. So our first destination was a swimming pool with hot springs water that was really amazing and quite cheap. When you pay, you also leave a deposit and they give you a locker key where you can put your things. You can also take some slippers here. This swimming pool is very popular for families with kids. We were lucky that when we arrived there, it was not really crowded. The water in the pool was amazing, such a great feeling. It was very warm, pleasant and relaxing. You really feel that you are pampering your body. Apart from the main swimming pool, there were two other small pools that were really extreme. One of them had really hot water, it felt like you can get boiled there. And the other pool had ice cold water. They say that it's very good for the cardiovascular system to go first to the hot water, to stay there for several seconds and then go to the ice-cold water again for several seconds. And you need to repeat it four or five times. It really stimulates your blood vessels. So we really enjoyed this experience and if you ever have a chance to go to hot springs, do not think twice, just go. 
and on the territory of the swimming pool they also had an area with traditional Kyrgyz yurts with swings and some local people wanted to take a picture with us. I guess we looked exotic for them. How do you like the hot springs water? It was amazing. I like it. Yeah. 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 For me, it's like the best experience I've ever had in my life. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like that is cool. Yeah, that was, was good. Then we went to visit one museum that was surprisingly inspiring for me. It was a museum devoted to Nikolai Przewalski, who was a 19th century Russian geographer and explorer. What is interesting about the guy is that he made expeditions to the countries of Central Asia that were not explored at that time and that the Western world didn't know about. The most famous expeditions were to China, Tibet, Mongolia and Gobi Desert. He documented his travels. In his notebooks he would draw pictures of the local people, describe their lifestyle and traditions and also he discovered different species of plants and animals. Have you heard about Przewalski's horse? This wild horse species is called like this because Przewalski was the one who described it during his travels. It was called in his honor. So I was thinking, wow, he explored so many places in Central Asia back in the 19th century when it was quite hard to do these expeditions, there was no comfort. And now I can actually do almost the same as he did explore and show people this part of the world just with my camera. I can show the way people live here. Or better than that, I can show you that traveling isn't that expensive and that you can go out to the world and easily explore it yourselves nowadays. I felt that I had similar spirit with this traveler and explorer that lived back in the 19th century. Actually, why they have this museum in Karakol is because that's the place where he died. It happened in November 1888 at the age of 49. Karakol was even holding the name Przewalsk during the Soviet era, in honor of this explorer. And his tomb is here on the territory of the museum that everyone can come and visit. Our next destination was outside of Karakol. It's a red mountain called Broken Heart. Not far from the mountain, they made a small park with traditional Kyrgyz yurts. We could even see how they put cover onto one of them. And as we were walking towards the broken heart, heavy rain started, so it was not possible to continue our hiking. We tried to hide under a tree, but it wasn't really working, so we had to run back to the car because we were getting really wet and cold. Unfortunately, we were not lucky with the weather. Even though we were there in August, after rain it got really cold. We decided to go and find a place to have lunch. Not far away there was a cafe where you can eat in a traditional yurt, sitting on the floor on a warm and soft pillow. Apart from us, there was one family from Kazakhstan there. They were very nice and communicative, just like our companion, so they had nice conversations. This time we ordered kurdak, which is a famous dish in Central Asia made of lamb meat, liver, kidney and potatoes. And we had some tea. When we finished lunch, the rain stopped. There was an old Soviet guest house, not too far, and we decided to have a walk there. That guest house was still working, but it looked like they didn't make any renovations and from the Soviet times it stayed the same. There was a statue of Lenin and some other interesting statues on the territory of the guest house. And behind it, there was a trail that led to a forest where it was possible to go for a nice walk. It was great to enjoy the nature and fresh air. We didn't go deep into the forest because it was quite muddy after the rain. The red mountains of that area were really amazing. I've never seen anything like that before, so we decided to hike up to one of them. Turned out that on the top of the hill where the trail was leading, there was a yurt where people were living and they had cattle there. 
the landscapes around were really gorgeous. Then we went to a small village 50 kilometers from Karakol when Ulan's other relatives were leaving and had tea with them, but I wasn't filming there. We also passed the Sikul Lake. It's a pity that it was too cold to swim. The lake is really huge and from there you could not see the other side of the lake. We saw a beautiful sunset and there was a part of rainbow in the sky after the rain that was looking like a huge fire. It's a pity that the camera cannot really show this beauty the way it is in reality. And at night, after dinner at home, we decided to go for a walk in the center of Karakol with Nurlan and his family. His kids were very energetic, laughing all the time. You can tell that they are happy and that they grow in atmosphere of love and care. It was very nice that they were proud of their town. We passed the university and walked in the park that had a very long alley surrounded by trees. So it was great that we could experience many things and explore different places just in one day. It's so nice that we had a new local friend that showed us around. We needed to go back to Bishkek the next day and Durlan kindly brought us to the bus station where we took a minibus to Bishkek. He didn't want to take any money for accommodation or food, but still we felt that he did so much for us and we forced him to take some more money from us. We said that he can take more gas for his car. We had really great impression of Caracol. Of course, we couldn't see everything. There are a lot of other beautiful places, trails and mountains and a beautiful ski resort. Many people spend weeks there to explore everywhere. So, this is a great destination that you should consider visiting if you ever come to Kyrgyzstan. Thanks for watching this video! I will be very grateful if you support me with your like and subscription to my channel, and I'll see you in my next videos! Bye bye!